It's time for the Locals Only Podcast with Dixon. Got it. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's another edition of the Locals Only Podcast. I'm Dixon, joined this week by my good friend, Tim Forbes. Tim, how are you? I'm well, man. How are you? Fantastic. Uh, you might know Tim from his single Young and Dumb, which was featured on 95X, Locals Only, and the Locals Only Spotlight earlier this year. Or maybe you've just seen him out at an event in the past. Tim and I were co-workers for a solid five years, mm -hmm. uh, and he is now no longer my co-worker, still my friend, still a vibrant part of the local music scene. Uh, and you've got a, a pretty important gig coming up this week that I thought deserved a little attention. So I was like, let's get Tim on the podcast. Um, so let, let's talk about this gig on Saturday, which I know is for a great cause, although that cause is a bit on the sad side. It is sad. It's a, it's a very sad situation. Um, my friend Zach, who I grew up with, um, him and his wife, Kelsey, had a baby several years back, and um, she's a little over two at this point right now, but recently she was diagnosed with cancer. Um, it's called JMML. It's got obviously a longer scientific name that neither of us can pronounce, um, but it's, it's a very sad situation. Um, you know, she's doing the best to, to overcome it. Um, I think she's had some, some surgeries and some treatments, um, but, but Saturday at the Mexico VFW, which um, is right on Route 3 headed towards Pulaski in Mexico, which is my hometown, um, there's a benefit from one to six uh, to benefit Violet is a little girl's name. And I'm playing throughout the entire thing in little increments. Um, really excited for the opportunity. Super thankful to be asked to do that. Obviously, I wish it were a different situation that I was playing for, but um, it's really amazing to see the community come together and, and rally behind Zach and Kelsey and Violet. And we're just hoping for a really great day to raise a bunch of money to help them with any medical bills and anything else that they've over or that they need to overcome and uh, to celebrate a sweet little girl who really does not deserve to be faced with something like this. Absolutely. And you're a good person for, for jumping in and doing this. And like a lot of benefits of this nature, there's other ways to raise money there as well. There's basket raffles. They've got some large item raffles. There's a bake sale. They're selling some bracelets. All the funds go directly to Violet. So uh, if you're free on Saturday, uh, that's this Saturday, May 14th, 1 to 6 p.m., it's the Mexico VFW, again, right on Route 3. And uh, for those that don't know, Tim plays a, a wide variety of stuff. So not only is he uh, a very talented singer-songwriter in his own regard, releasing singles like Young and Dumb and a few future songs as well that will be uh, – probably debuting later this year. Uh, you also run the gamut of doing like some crowd pleasers and some off sort of off the beaten path covers. So if somebody hasn't seen you live, kind of run us through a few things that they might hear from a Tim Forbes set. Yeah, so I mean, I would consider crowd pleasers to be like, uh, you know, Ho Hey by the Lumineers. They're one of my favorite bands. I had the pleasure of seeing them in Tampa uh, last month or two months ago, and, and they're absolutely phenomenal. Um, Better Man by Pearl Jam usually turns some heads. You know, I'll play some Beatles tunes. I'll play uh, a Brandy or a Fine Girl um, by Looking Glass is always popular. I'm really kind of all over the place. I try my best to be almost like a human jukebox where, hey, what do you want to hear? If I have some kind of idea of to how it goes, I have an iPad in front of me with a little cheat sheet, so I might be able to play it. But I jokingly say, you know, I've got a wide range of music and feel free to request what you want. There's probably like a 30% chance I'll know it. <laughs> well, you also get off into some different territory because I know that well, you, mean, you can look right behind you to see that you're a Manchester Orchestra fan. And yeah. There's a few of those songs in your arsenal. You also, mm -hmm. I know because we've talked about it, are a Gordon Lightfoot fan. Yeah, uh, I know that there's some of that stuff in your repertoire as well. So it, it, it's a little bit uh, kind of in the best possible way all over the place. And it just kind of exemplifies, in, in my opinion, the fact that you have pretty great taste, minus the Pearl Jam song, um, <laughs> and that it could be a lot of fun to come out and, and see you play live. Yeah, I, mean, I really appreciate that. Um, like you said, Manchester Orchestra, I'm a huge fan of them. Um, Nathaniel Rateliff is like my muse. 
um, in terms of singer songwriter styles. Um, I, I started covering devil like me by rainbow kitten surprise. I use a looper for that. So that's kind of cool. Um, but, but really, you know, I play to the crowd depending on who's there and, and I try to have something for everyone. I think that's really important. So, you know, there's definitely stuff that I play because I want to play it because it's, <laughs> it's just the nature of the gig, but I, I really do try and have something for everyone. And you always achieve that, sir. For those wondering, you can just find Sir Forbes, Tim Forbes Music across all social media. Type that in. You'll find Tim. Uh, Young and Dumb is up and streaming everywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. Wouldn't be a bad idea to go and spend that dollar nine on iTunes on that bad boy. Uh, make you. a great little gift for people. Um, and and it, again, you can keep up on what Tim has going on because you gig pretty regularly. You're downtown. You're in Oswego. Yeah. Um, so like you're, you're, you're always out in playing, which I love to see, uh, especially, you know, you're a, a young musician, right? In, in a couple of ways, you're a young musician because you're, you're still in your mid twenties. Uh, but you're also, you know, like from a performance standpoint, really in, in like the, the twilight, right. Or, or the dawn of your career, right? Like, cause you've only been really gigging for a few years at this point. Yeah. I'm probably... It's so weird because with COVID, it's like we lost two years, but it's probably been pushing like a decade now that I've been performing. Uh, you know, I did kind of start in Oswego. I, like I said, I grew up in Mexico and um, we had some, I, I, my buddy John McConnell hosted an open mic in Oswego at Old City Hall. And that's where I kind of got my chops, kind of gained some confidence to go out and perform. Um I've mentioned this to you and, you know, a few times now, I consider John and you to be two of my biggest mentors in music in terms of giving me confidence to do what I do. So I'm super thankful for both of you um, that, you know, that goes beyond our just friendship. But um, yeah, I, I tend to be all over the map. You know, I, I don't like to just pigeonhole myself into one area. I, I grew up in Oswego County, so I play out there. I love playing downtown. I, you know, I play at Shaughnessy sometimes at the Marriott. I play Pizza Man Baldensville on the 21st of this month. So, um, and then Thursday, you know, uh, after the benefit on the 19th, I'm at Steamers in Oswego. So I'm back in Oswego County. And then May 22nd, I'm at Pleasant Beach Hotel in Fairhaven. So I'm just trying to be kind of all over the place and just get my name out there a little bit. So I do. I pride myself in not just staying in one area. There's even areas that I'm trying to break into, like out west in Rochester and um, different areas south in Cortland Tully in that area I'm trying to get into. So I do, I do really try and be all over the map. Remind me when we sign off, I've got a, a place to send you because I was, I was somewhere recently and I was like, man, this, this is Tim's vibe. Um, so I mentioned earlier, we worked together for we did. five years ish, right? Yeah. Did if you, you count when I was producing, um, yeah. and then sales is probably about five and a half years. So Tim and I, for the longest time were lunch buddies so much so that Tim got spoken to about it. And I can say that now <laughs> because we're no longer coworkers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so poke poke um but like uh you know tim and i were the the originators of bon me wednesday where oh. we would go to our bon me spot that i'm not going to say out loud because the lady no. gets mad at me every time i do um little <laughs> secret bon me spot but that was like our regular wednesday thing um we were two of the first people that had a chance to sit down and sample kasai when kasai opened in armory square um you know, Tim and I are both like sort of like foodie types, right? Like neither of us are are uh, boring in any way when it comes to to food. Uh, I know I recently sent you to Red Chili uh, mm -hmm. for for some Chinese, and uh, you and I have both lamented for a really long time that there was sort of a lack of good to great Mexican food. Mm -hmm. in Central New York, right? Like there's Mad Tacos, but that's way out in Madison County. Well, right. now Syracuse has a taco spot. You've had a chance to go. I have not. I am very jealous. Um, but I do want to make a date so that you and I can both go check out. Uh, and I'm going to butcher this. It's Desir Algo. Yeah, perfect. Desir Algo. Um, can you tell I failed out of Spanish in high school? 
That's fine. I took um, four years of Spanish and then uh, I really did not do well in college with it. So that's the extent of my knowledge. Um, but yeah, uh, Desir Algo's a ghost kitchen inside Danny's Steaks, which is attached to Kasai downtown on Walton Street. Um, I'll preface this by saying that the main cook, um, besides Kyle and Jesse at Desir Algo, her name is Taco. So when you go to a place that specializes in tacos and the person cooking your food is named Taco, it's probably a pretty good spot. And, and I love Taco. She's one of my good friends. So shout out to Taco. Um, slinging the tacos in the back. And I'll tell you what, man, they are incredible. There's a reason why they've been voted the best tacos in Syracuse. And they have the ever elusive birria taco. Oh which yeah. Everybody has been, I mean, no offense, Syracuse, but on the, on the popular food curve, you're a couple of years behind, right? Like it seems sure. like you, you see these things uh, featured on television, featured with influencers on the internet. And then about 18 months to two years later, you'll see something like that pop up in Syracuse. Uh, I got to give Kyle a lot of credit, man. Not only did he super serve Syracuse by bringing us real ramen, he then opened an authentic cheesesteak place and now he's involved with bringing us um what many are calling some of the best mexican food that's ever graced syracuse so like homie is, is doing great danny steaks is at nbt bank stadium all summer for every syracuse mets game um again another young talented dude doing his thing making strides i gotta try these tacos i'm so like I heard about like this tomato horseradish jam that they have with like a shrimp taco down there. Dude. And like, you're, you're pushing all my buttons with that seafood plus horseradish oh, in yeah. the context of Mexican food reminds me of like that, the, the spicy, the spicy soup with the seafood in it. Right. The almost like a ceviche type thing. Yeah. Uh, so I love that there's uh, little, little hints of authenticity, but also forward, forward thinking notes in everything they do across all three band uh, across all three brands what are some of your highlights from Desir Algo that you've had and what would you recommend for somebody that was going for the first time well I if you're into shrimp I mean the, the shrimp with the horseradish jam is phenomenal it's like a shrimp cocktail taco um so that I'm, I'm a huge fan of that um I I recently I think it was Cinco de Mayo. I went down there when they were running specials and they had um, each day of that week, they ran a, a different taco special. <laughs> I ended up getting all four of them um, on Cinco de Mayo and, and they were great. There was like a brisket queso taco, which was amazing. And I don't know if that's going to be around forever, but um, really all their tacos and I'm not just, you know, blowing it up because Kyle's a good friend of mine. I I'm, incredibly impressed with their entire menu. Uh, the birria tacos are fantastic. I had those. Um, and then even if you aren't really into, you know, kind of outside the box stuff, I had a chicken quesadilla too. That was like, it was really um, inexpensive, but huge, huge portion, super filling. And uh, the flavors were fantastic. Just a simple chicken and cheese quesadilla. Yeah, you can't go wrong with the, the simple stuff. What I also love is that there's a portobello option for vegetarians, mm -hmm. right? Because like a lot of Mexican places, like even with the beans, there's still some pork or some beef fat in them, right? right. So like this is a, a vegetarian friendly uh, in addition to also having things like chicharrones, which, you know, opposite ends of the spectrum. I've heard such amazing things about the salsa verde. And that's always something that like is near and dear to my heart because like, I love all things green in the context of Mexican and Tex-Mex food, <laughs> right? Like you, like hatch yeah. chilies are, in, in my opinion, the, the greatest pepper that's ever existed. Is it the hottest? No. Is it the sweetest? No. But it's the roundest, right? Like that, mm. that, that hatch chili, I love tomatillos. I love a good fresh jalapeno, cilantro. All my favorite Mexican things are green. I've heard nothing but great things about that salsa verde. You and I are going to have to get down there. I think people that say that cilantro tastes like soap are clinically insane because it's probably one of my favorite herbs. Um, oh, yeah. You know, I, I like other ones, too, but cilantro is is up there with uh, with the top of them. Um, 
There's also, uh, I think it, we should definitely mention the fact that you can get corn tortillas too for your tacos. So if you have a gluten intolerance, you don't have to worry about that. It's not just uh, flour tortillas. So I think that's important too. Yeah. And here's the thing I'll say, and, and if you want to call me a food snob or a taco snob for this, you can. Um, flour tortillas really are kind of like the white people addition to Mexican food, right? Like I know they exist in Mexico, right? But they're right. generally for the tourists. Like if you want like a real authentic taco, you want a corn tortilla. It has a flavor that isn't there with the flour. It has a, a, a very specific flavor, especially if they're grilled properly. Uh, and don't complain when there's two of them, right? Because one is meant to get crispy and give you a charred flavor. And the other is to make sure that your stuff stays inside the taco. Yeah. And, and that's another thing worth mentioning is I, the last tacos that I got, I did get corn tortillas and they were doubled up and it made such a better experience because I wasn't covered in the toppings that went inside the tacos, very uh, held together and just absolutely delicious. I can't say enough about this here. I'll go. Well, also, Kyle, if you're watching, you promised me that you were going to start carrying lingua at some point here. So I'm going to hold you to that because there is nothing like a tongue taco, bro. Like I know um, that a lot of people are put off by the idea of cow's tongue, but that just means either you've never had it or you had it and somebody mistreated it because a good beef tongue is like the best pot roast, the richest, most tender pot roast you've ever had in your entire life add a Mexican flavor profile to it. And that's a lingua taco. I've never had it, but you know, when we talk about being foodies, I'll try everything once. I know. I know. That's what I like about you, Tim. <laughs> For a long time, I didn't like lettuce, but Hey, believe it or not, I eat salads. So did I get you on the lettuce train? Um, so I went to Myrtle Beach in May of 2020 before things really hit the fan and uh, we were out to dinner and I got a, a salad with my dinner because I didn't care for the soup option. And I was like, well, we'll give it to, we'll give it a try. And I don't know if at some point in those few years since I had known you that my taste buds changed, but I don't particularly love shredded lettuce, but um, some, of the, some of the other lettuces... Because here's the thing, man, and, I, and I'll call them out for it. Fast food restaurants, I think, have ruined lettuce in, in a lot of ways, and, and some of them in worse ways than others, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not going to name names because I don't feel like getting yelled at, but you know who I'm talking about with your shredded lettuce on everything that tastes stale and weird and, like, the inside of a refrigerator. Yeah. Um, real lettuce, like, and, and again, man, like, the American palate is so conditioned to the really super mild watery lettuces like iceberg and even to a degree romaine that like if you really start to explore uh, other types of lettuce like i love bib which is also considered butter lettuce right like radicchio right. is ridiculous if you grill up some radicchio chop it make yourself a salad with some blue cheese and some nice balsamic mm. vinegar i'll throw some nice toasted walnuts in there man you and i are going to have a whole separate like we're, we're going to do a like a seven course lettuce tasting where I get you to a point where you're like going out of your way to order salads when you go out places. Well, it's funny because, you know, for a long time, if I ordered a burger, say, I would say no pickles, no lettuce. Even when I was younger, I didn't even like tomatoes. It was just ketchup, cheese, burger, bun. And now like if it's if there's like a nice leaf lettuce, like a nice healthy portion of leaf lettuce, not shredded because shredded should never go on a burger. But if there's like a nice leaf lettuce, I think it brings a lot to it. It's a little crunch, a little cool, um, you know, especially if there's something spicy, if you got jalapenos on your burger or whatever. Um, yeah, I never thought I'd say it, man, but your boy eats lettuce. I like it. Well, the other thing that lettuce and to a degree tomatoes and onions do on a burger, if placed properly, will insulate your bun to a point where like you don't sop through, right? Because a juicy burger is going to ruin that bottom bun, which is why you put a little mayonnaise and then lettuce and then tomato and then onion in that order. Um, and that tomato, if not cut properly, will be a problem because it's going to squirt out the back end. Yeah. You know, why Which is why I don't get tomatoes on many sure. things because most places don't know how to build a burger or a sandwich, but that's neither here nor there. Let's make a date to go to uh, Desir Algo 
and we will uh, report back and I'll, I'll even probably like record it because I do that now. Time and place, man. I'm there. Yeah. You were, you were the guy that got the perfect shot of me eating a hot dog at Stewart's back in the day. So. Dude, we've had a lot of great times. Um, you know, you used to, you used to bust me for uh, the times that we would get bond knees and I would be about three feet from the trash can and, and miss throwing <laughs> the rapper. <laughs> well, the thing is, is if you weren't like six, seven in playing like rec league basketball all the time, yeah. I probably wouldn't have busted your chops so hard about it. Yeah. Well, I think it was too much pressure. I was, you know, in the same room as a local celebrity, you know? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, anyway, so Tim's playing a benefit for Violet Faith Morgan Saturday, May 14th at the Mexico VFW Route 3 in Mexico from 1 to 6. Uh, you'll be playing intermittently throughout the day, little sets here and there. Uh, mm -hmm. Bring some cash, buy some raffle tickets, uh, you know, like indulge your sweet tooth and buy everything from the bake sale. Uh, and let's help this little girl with her struggle, help their family. And while you're there, you'll get some baked goods. Maybe you'll walk away with something from the raffle, but you will most certainly walk away being entertained by my good friend, Tim Forbes. Tim Forbes music across social media. Dude, I can't thank you enough for doing this tonight. I'm so proud of you and all the progress you've made. Um, not only as a musician, but for, for doing things like this, this benefit where I don't know a whole lot of human beings that would give up an entire Saturday afternoon to go help a high school friend that they've not necessarily been super close with for a bunch of years. Right. So like, I think that speaks, uh, to who you are as a person. And I think that's why I've always had the utmost respect for you. And, uh, just wanted to say that out loud. Yeah means a lot to me, man. And I have nothing but respect for you too. Um, Saturday is going to be a, a really wonderful event. If you have time to stop out, please do. Like Dixon said, bring some cash, try out some raffles. And uh, you know, I hope that you enjoy my music. It's, you know, it's obviously much bigger than that. Um, all to benefit Violet and her fight with JMML, but it's, it's really meant to be a nice positive day with a lot of fun entertainment and i'm thrown in the mix too so if you do happen to stop out when i'm not playing feel free to come up and you know introduce yourself i'd love to meet you um and, and thank you dixon for everything that you've done for me since i met you i mean you've come a long ways from being that intimidating guy that i you know saw walk past me from time to time when i was at the producer's desk <laughs> and we started talking and became really good friends obviously lunch buddies and foodies all like um you've done so much for me man and the community the local music scene like you're a legend around here and i'm not just saying that to gas you up i mean it from the bottom of my heart man i got a lot of love for you i appreciate you sir and that is very much reciprocated uh young and dumb is available everywhere now the lead single from mr tim forbes and i'm gonna put it out there uh i'm gonna give you till labor day okay to get a second single out Love a good deadline. Homework assignment. Man. Homework assignment. Sounds good. All right, dude. Thank you again. Check out Tim Forbes music across social media, and we will return next Thursday at two with another edition of the Locals Only podcast for 95X.